Space flight is not easy. There are many obstacles to overcome. All systems of a space vehicle must work together perfectly in an unforgiving environment that doesn't allow for errors. A spacecraft must travel over 30 times the speed of sound to escape Earth's gravity. It must endure extreme temperatures, pressures, and vibrations. For a ship that carries a crew, it must get human beings into space and return them safely. Confronted with these challenges over the years, NASA engineers developed a system to build spacecraft, designing and testing bit by bit, then bringing all the elements together in a series of flight tests. It has been said that one good flight test is worth a thousand expert opinions. The flight tests either confirm engineers' predictions or direct their attention to what needs to be fixed. NASA's new space program is called Constellation, a new generation of space vehicles will take crews to the International Space Station, return humans to the moon, and even expand humankind's reach farther out into the solar system. For the Constellation era, spacecraft designs and hardware have reached the point where the first flight tests begin now. Creating a spacecraft is a process. Engineers conceptualize, model, and predict the performance of a vehicle using computers and other development tools. Eventually, the design is put to the test in the real world, but not all at once. Rather than launch an entire vehicle, components are tested one piece at a time before being brought together in an integrated flight test. It's a tried and true method called test as you go. It's so important as you're doing your design to do early checks to validate your fundamental assumptions. It's cheaper to test these individual things by themselves before they're part of an integrated system. So an integrated system that failed during flight would be much more expensive. So you want to break it down into pieces. Engineers would rather discover a design flaw on a test stand instead of during a flight. The end goal of using the method is to build a safer vehicle. Certainly before the crew is uh, launched for the first time, the intent would be to do a really good thorough ringing out of all of the systems to understand that we've closed or bought down any of the risk that are involved with the flight of the vehicle prior to putting humans on. The space shuttle was the only spacecraft launched as a complete system without flying an unmanned test first. The integrated flight included detaching solid rocket boosters, a detaching external tank, a return through the Earth's atmosphere, and unpowered landing from orbit, all of which were tested for the first time with a crew on board. For Constellation, the spacecraft will see a return to unmanned flight tests. The Constellation launch vehicle that will carry the crew into space is called Ares-1. Ares-1 consists of a shuttle-derived solid rocket booster for a lower stage and a liquid fuel rocket for an upper stage. Sitting on top of Ares-1 is the Orion Crew Exploration Vehicle. Orion is similar in shape to the Apollo spacecraft, but is larger and features state-of-the-art equipment. Orion can dock with a space station, rendezvous with other components for a lunar mission, and even be modified to play a part in a mission to Mars. All of these potential journeys depend upon the Ares-1 launch vehicle getting Orion into orbit. Like past NASA spacecraft, engineers are applying the test-as-you-go method to Ares-1. Computer analysis and early development tests begin the process. On the hardware side, parts of the rocket have been tried out individually. In the test-as-you-go world, it is time to fly, 
and the first flight test for Ares-1 is a vehicle called Ares-1X. It is an unmanned test and will focus on the first stage of flight. Ares-1X is the same length as the Ares-1, the same diameter. It has a similar rocket on the bottom end and its goal is to simulate the flight and test out the flight control to make sure that the engineers have enough data in order to finish designing and building the Ares-1. Components for the Ares-1X have come from around the country. The rocket is being assembled at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, the first new space vehicle in almost three decades. Ares-1X features a four-segment solid rocket booster which will lift the vehicle during its two minutes of powered flight. The real Ares-1 rocket will actually have a fifth segment to help push it into space. For this early test, however, the fifth segment is an inactive mock-up, as is the rest of the upper stage, crew module, and launch abort system. The Ares-1X will climb 25 miles in altitude. The first and second stage will separate. The test continues as the parachute system is deployed for the solid rocket booster, which will gently descend to the sea. From flight dynamics to control to stage recovery, the data gathered as a result of this flight will give engineers the early look they need to see how the design is progressing. We have uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of 700 special sensors on this rocket that we will use to collect the data on the rocket as it launches and ascends and separates and then comes back down. And the sensors are looking at pressures and temperatures and stresses and strains and vibrations and all kind of things. These are the clues that we have to what's happening at various locations along the rocket. This mission is all about, you know, besides being cheap and quick, we're about gathering data for the Ares-1 folks for their critical design view so they can use it. Once we have that data, the Ares folks have other tests that they plan to take them higher into the atmosphere and collect more data down that way. When we actually fly, we expect to have things that don't go perfectly. In fact, we hope they do. You learn a lot when everything goes right. You learn a tremendous amount when something doesn't go quite as right, because then you have something to go fix, to go look at, to go analyze, and then retest on a subsequent flight. It's the mid-1960s, and the Apollo program is testing its launch escape system. At the White Sands Missile Range in Las Cruces, New Mexico, a squatty rocket nicknamed Little Joe 2 launches an Apollo capsule for a high-altitude test. Engineers want to see if the escape system can pull the capsule away from danger in the event of an emergency. The unmanned test shows the escape system works. Years later, an escape system was used for real on a Russian Soyuz rocket. When spilt fuel caught fire on the launch pad, an escape rocket pulled the crew away from the hazard, saving their lives. For Orion, crew safety is a prime factor in its design. Engineers have included a launch abort system, which is more robust and features more control capability than any of its predecessors. Once again, the White Sands Missile Range will play host to the escape system flight test. A mock crew module will sit in for the Orion spacecraft. Instead of a crew, a battery of sensors are installed inside to help analyze the flight. Called Pad Abort 1, the test will simulate an abort off the Ares 1 while it is still sitting on the launch pad. Because an abort must happen quickly, the entire test will take place in a matter of seconds. So the first thing that happens is we fire, send a command to fire the abort motor, and at the same time we fire the command, send a command to fire the attitude control motor. So right off the bat, we, we put out 500,000 pounds of thrust, and in the first two seconds, we accelerate to about Mach 0.6. At about 10 seconds, we send the command to reorient. What will happen then is the attitude control motor will then start to pitch the vehicle over and reorient it. We're now flying that the heat shield is now forward into the airstream. At uh, 21 seconds, we'll go ahead and fire the jettison motor which then jettisons this whole tower, so now you just have the, the crew module flying by itself. 23 seconds will then jettison the forward bay cover, and then two seconds later, at 25 seconds, we'll deploy the drogue chutes. 
and then for the next 50 seconds, we're basically descending under in stable flight under the three main parachutes. And so by testing this abort system, you know, we directly influence the, the ability to keep the crew safe. That's what I've done my career is doing flight tests. So to actually be here and be a part of this program and doing flight tests is, I couldn't think of a better place to be. For Constellation, the flight tests will continue. NASA engineers will learn from every test, make adjustments, fly more, and push the vehicles harder and harder. Their skill, talent, and persistence will shape the best designs possible for our vehicles of exploration. It's work that will affect future explorers as well. Constellation's exploration goals reach across generations, inspiring the engineers and astronauts of tomorrow, launching those dreams of exploring off our planet might be the biggest reward of all. One of the cool things about Constellation is it's, it's the beginning of a long road of opportunities. It has a lot of capability to have a lot of exciting missions uh, and challenges for engineers and scientists and astronauts in the future. And so I am extremely excited at the thought of a, going back to the moon, and B, being there at, at, you know, when we finally land on Mars, I'll be able to tell my kids and my grandkids, hey, look, when we started to go do this, I worked on that very first rocket. All this happened because we helped do that. We helped get folks the data. It, it's incremental. We built upon everything, and that is a, just an incredible feeling to know that you were in on the ground floor of something that big.